Hey friends, in the previous lecture we have got to know that is what is the, uh, the uh, concept of acid and in that case we have got to know that is monoprotic acid, diprotic acid and uh, triprotic acid depending on the uh, acid protons that are being dissociated by one molecule of an acid. So now we are going to discuss about uh, exclusively about uh, the ionization of uh, polyprotic acid. So now let us understand that how a polyprotic acid is being ionized. So let us talk about it. So now let us talk about uh, that is polyprotic acid first because we have to understand the ionization of the polyprotic acid. So what is actually polyprotic acid? Let us understand and that is the polyprotic acid molecules contains more than one acid hydrogen atoms. So which all ionization of one molecule means ionization of one molecule of the uh, that is uh, acid it will produce more than one H plus ions and those that is uh, acids that produce more than one H plus ions or we could call that as uh, that acid proton. So therefore that kind of the molecules or that kind of acids are basically known as polyprotic acid. So let me give you an example in this case. Suppose if you are talking about H2SO4. So assume that H2SO4 is a very strong acid so therefore it will dissociate completely. So therefore it will dissociate into two parts that is it will involve two steps. The first thing is it will dissociate into that is H plus along with that of that is SO4H minus. So this minus is on basically the molecule or this group that we have. And uh, suppose in this case basically uh, the proton that has been liberated in the first step is basically one uh, proton that is one H plus. And again we could see that this is the product that we have. Again this will undergo dissociation so as to form basically uh, that is we could write it over here as HSO4 minus which on dissociation and now it will also dissociate completely so as to form that is uh, H plus along with that of SO4 2 minus. So this is what we have got. So we could see that is because of the overall H2SO4 we have got two protons or this is basically this protons are basically known as acid hydrogen. Because the reason behind that is because we have taken the concept earlier also according to the Arrhenius or the Lowry prostate and uh, in that case we have got to know that is the one uh, the substance which on uh, which consists of hydrogen atom and which on dissolving in water that produces H plus ions are basically known as acids. So again this is an acid but the thing is uh, this is a diprotic acid if you talk specifically about it because H2S4 is responsible so as to give that is two H plus ions or we could say as two acid hydrogen. So therefore this is the ionization that it takes place over here as you could see but the ionization takes place in two steps. So therefore the first ionization that we have got is known as first ionization of the h 2 4 and this is the second ionization that we have got and uh, so this was an example. But meanwhile it has been observed that uh, the first ionization or we could say the first ionization that we have got that is of H plus and SO4 uh, H minus so that will be relatively very much easy or very readily it will give H plus compared to that of uh, the H plus that is being given by HSO4 minus. And what is the reason? We are going to talk about later. But now let us understand about uh, the triprotic example uh, that is uh, I will talk about like uh, H3PO4 or phosphoric acid. So again if I am talking about H3PO4. So again uh, if it is a strong acid so therefore it will give us basically uh, H plus along with that of that is H2 PO4 minus. So again even this on uh, that is uh, it will uh, again dissociate into because this is the first ionization uh, product that we have got over here. So now uh, the next is basically H2 PO4 minus it will on dissociation it will again uh, liberate that is H plus along with that of that is H P O four because the one hydrogen atom uh, or one hydrogen uh, as you could see over here that is which is an ion it has basically one charge so earlier it has one charge as you could see minus one charge so therefore ultimately we could see that it will have minus two charge on it so again if this on that is uh, ionization this will give basically H P O four two minus this on ionization that will give us that is H plus along with that of that is P O four 3 minus. So that is what we have got and even though if we uh, in this case we have made it in several steps that is step number 1, step number 2 and step number 3. 
But if we talk about the overall ionization, then H3PO4 that ionizes into three moles of H plus ion along with that of that is PO4 3 minus. So that is what we get. But in this case, we are talking about the polyprotic acid, and especially we are going to talk about that is a triprotic acid, and we'll see the that what is basically the ionization that takes place over here. So therefore, this are the product that we are concerned with, and because of which it has been called to be a tri protic acid and that's the reason that this are basically known as acid hydrogen so based on this reference we are going to talk about the overall uh, polyprotic acid and uh, let us talk about that how this kind of polyprotic acid they ionizes and what is the effect of the uh, that is uh, the dissociation constant or equilibrium constant and uh, which one would be more easily uh, will give us h plus ion and that is what we have to look uh, and that is what we are concerned with. So, so now for which consider a triprotic acid, and that triprotic acid is nothing but uh, you would write it over here as H3A. So this H3A will, and overall it will give us because uh, might be this would be a strong acid or might be a weak acid. So therefore we are meeting in an equilibrium position over here and so therefore it will give us that is 3 moles of H plus along with A3 minus. So this is the overall thing that we could get but this reaction or this uh, type of dissociation can be uh, calculated in three steps and that is the step number one that we are going to talk about. So in basically in step number one what will happen is basically the first acid that we are going to talk about and that is basically H3A. So it will dissociate in such a manner that we could get the first proton from it and that is basically H plus and along with that that is the remaining part it would be basically an anion so therefore we, would, we could write it as basically H2A minus. So this is the first step uh, that it has been involved and uh, if we talk about the uh, that is dissociation constant or if we apply the law of mass action in this case then we will get to know that is uh, for the first one, suppose if I am talking about the first one, then for the first one, let, is, let the dissociation constant be like Ka because we are talking about acid. So now uh, let us talk about uh, that is dissociation constant for this one, or for step one. So let this be basically, I would name it as Ka1. So now, because as we know that is according to the law of mass action, we could say that this is the, uh, the product of the concentration of the products. So that is what we have got over here, that is H2A minus here and the whole divided by that is concentration of H3A. So this is what we have to maintain and uh, it would be utilized. So this is what we have got but uh, the step number two is also been remaining as well as step number three because all the hydrogen atoms are not been ionized still yet. So in this case the first hydrogen atom has been ionized but the rest of the two are remaining. So we are going to ionize that also. So that's the reason at step number two Basically, we would ionize uh, the product that we have got over here, that is H2A minus. So, therefore, if H2A minus is the one that gets ionized or that gets dissociated, so now we could get that is again a proton that is what we could get, and again we could see that uh, the remaining part that is uh, HA2 minus is what it will be, uh, it will be removed. And that's the reason that uh, you could see that the equilibrium is being maintained over here. So therefore, in this case, even though if we apply the law of mass section, so we'll get a dissociation constant or dissociation constant for acid, we could say. And that's the reason that we will name it as Ka2. So therefore, it would be equal to that of the concentration of H plus, along with that of the uh, concentration of HA2 minus the whole divided by basically the reacted in this case. That is in step number two. So therefore, it is basically H2A minus. So this is what we have got and we will name this as 2 equation number two. and uh, but still all the hydrogens are not being liberated uh, uh, hydrogen atoms or in terms of an ion that is H plus ion are not being removed uh, so therefore or are been not being ionized so therefore even we have to write the third step for this and the third step is basically it would be written as that is H A minus that on dissociation that gives us H plus along with that of that is A3 minus. So this is what we have got over here and even though we can write the dissociation constant for this uh, weak acid suppose it is and that is uh, Ka3 
which is basically H plus. So this is Ka3, which is equals to H plus, and according uh, and we'll uh, multiply it by that is uh, the remaining part. That is uh, the product is basically A3 minus, and log with that of a ratio of that is H A two minus. So this is what we could get, and we'll name this as uh, equation number three. But if we take the uh, overall, that is uh, dissociation constant for the acid like this one. So this was the one that is was been uh, in a one step only. It was been mentioned over here. So therefore, we can obtain uh, the equilibrium constant, or we could call it the dissociation constant for the weak acid as Ka also. But it has been observed that. But it has been observed that. This Ka or the dissociation constant for the weak acid is equals to the product of the all the dissociation constant that has taken in uh, each step. So in this case, basically for the first step, it is basically Ka1 multiplied by Ka2 multiplied by Ka3. So let us substitute the value over here and let us see that how does uh, this kind of uh, that is dissociation constant are related to the overall dissociation constant. So now we are going to substitute the values over here. So therefore for Ka, if we have a reference, I would uh, like to share with you. So therefore this is H plus along with that of H2A minus divided by H3A. So let us write out it here. That is, I will write it down here as H plus, concentration of H plus into concentration of H2A minus the whole divided by that is concentration of H3A. So this is what we have discussed about that is Ka1 and remaining part is Ka2. So even we have that with us so that I would share with you that is H plus along with that of Ha2 minus divided by H2A. So this is what we are going to replace here that is we are going to substitute over here and this is what we could get that is H plus concentration of H plus multiplied by that is uh, Ha2 minus divided by that is H2A minus. And multiply by talking about the Ka3, even I have with me, so I could write down here as that is A3 minus over here divided by that is HA2 minus. So this is what we have got, and uh, let us see that what, what is the term that could be cancelled. And uh, if I could see that this H2A and this H2A they both can get cancelled, so therefore I would cancel over here. Talking about this HA2 minus again, HA2 minus, even this would be cancelled out over here. So the thing that has been left out uh, is, let's see that, uh, is there anything that has been left out or not? No, there is nothing left out. So therefore, the part that has been remaining is basically 3 moles of H plus. So therefore, even uh, a multiplication has been applied over here. So therefore, we could write it over here as H plus raised to 3 into basically A3 minus the whole divided by the concentration of H3A. But this is the dissociation constant for the weak acid for the main uh, that is uh, for the main reaction that is what we are talking about this one. So it has been clear that uh, this is how uh, the dissociation constant are also related to each other in these terms and we have got uh, this uh, dissociation constant for the overall uh, that is weak acid or any kind of acid. So but the main thing is since we are talking about that is Ka1 as well as Ka2 and Ka3, will this all three will be of uh, the same magnitude? No, they are not of the same magnitude. The reason behind that is talking about the first one, that is in the first step, if I am talking about, then the first, in the first step, that is the first proton is the one that is, or the first uh, uh, acid hydrogen atom is getting uh, separated from this H3 and uh, H2A minus is being liberated. So we could see that. Uh, this H3A plus is the one which doesn't have any charge or basically this is neutral in terms of the charge. So after dissociating this will acquire H plus and H2A will acquire uh, the minus charge. But if we have to remove that is uh, hydrogen from H2A minus that is I am talking about the step number 2. If we have to remove the hydrogen H plus from the uh, step number 2 so as to obtain H plus along with that of HA2 minus. So this process of removal of the hydrogen ion is very much difficult compared to that of the step number one. So it clearly indicates that the protons that are being available uh, very easily can be obtained from the step number one. And that's the reason that Ka1 value will be more compared to that of Ka2. 
and obviously when it comes to k a3 obviously we could see because uh, there are two uh, minus charges so therefore h is the one which is basically positive in nature uh, which has acquires a positive charge over here so as to separate this from this negative charged species that it has so it's quite difficult so therefore that's the reason that we could say and statement that is uh, k a1 is far greater than that of that is k a2 which is far more greater than that of that is k a3 so this indicates that is uh, the first dissociation or the first ionization is comparatively uh, more compared to that of the second and compared to the, that of the third so that is how that is the dissociation takes place for a polyprotic acid and that's the reason that in the first step we could get uh, various uh, or easily we could get uh, the proton that is H plus ion and that makes the polyprotic acid in the first step to be more acidic in nature compared to that of the second one and compared to that of the third one so that is what I wanted to explain over here and yes there are the few reasons that I have talked about and uh, it is not only because uh, uh, it will give us the H plus ions very easily but in terms of the steps also that we have got to know and in terms of that is the dissociation constant of the acid also we have got to know that is the first ionization is very much easy or is very much to a larger extent compared to that of the K uh, second step which has a K2 value which is comparatively very less than that is K1 and K3 obviously it would be the most weakest uh, and in that case the H plus ion that is uh, we would get that declares that uh, the proton that is the acid that is if I am talking about uh, that is HA2 minus therefore this one will be the weakest acid because it will not give us the H plus ion so much easily and that won't dissociate too much easily so that is the reason that uh, the second step would be basically uh, considered to be the weak acid and compared to that of the uh, K third step it would be considered to be the weakest acid and this is how I have uh, made a conclusion about the ionization of the polyprotic acid so that's it friends uh, i wanted to talk about and uh, thank you for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and you share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much